Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Borick. Sorry for the delay on the Stanley Cup video. Been having bad stomach issues today, so slept most of the day, but we'll get right into it. Please continue to subscribe down below. We're up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. This is going to be a quick video as we analyze the action this far and then get into previewing tonight's action as we have game two of the Florida Panthers in the battle of Florida against Tampa Bay as Tampa Bay was able to capitalize and win 4-1 to one after a fantastic third period to be able to close out against the Panthers. And then in the Blues and Avalanche, that was one of the many great OT games of the playoffs this far as you were able to have the Avalanche head into overtime and win 3-2 to two <clears throat> over the Blues. O'Reilly ended up having a nice play to start this game. On the backhander, he was able to take it away from Cal McCarr, of all people, and then score the goal. Nashuskin then scored on a rebound uh, to give the Avalanche the tie, and then Samuel Gerrard uh, scored one, shooting it through the wickets of Jordan Bennington from the point there. And then Kairou was able to tie it. That was a... Nice play by Jordan Cairo there to be able to tie it on the power play. But then in OT, Bennington, as the puck's going end around, ends up falling over, ends up getting up. And then Manson's able to still fire it in cage and is able to find the top of the net there where there's not much that Jordan Bennington could have done there. He was the A-plus star of this game. He was the reason the Blues were in the overtime and the Avalanche did not win sooner. He was the guy that was a carrying weight of that game for the Blues. So you have to give him the star of the game for the Blues. Obviously the star of the game for the Avalanche. It's pretty obvious who that is going to go to when you have Josh Manson who won them the game. That's just automatic. But that game <clears throat> that game was a really fun game to watch just because I love watching. I've said this multiple times in other videos, but I'm a huge goaltender person. I just did a video on Askarov. I did one on Fedotov and Strassmann recently as well as others in the past on, like, the Koshas and the Delkoviches of the world. So I like analyzing and talking about goaltending. That was a great goaltending game by um, Jordan Bennington, who's really stepped up since winning the last three of the first round for the St. Louis Blues. And also in this first game, they just couldn't get over the hump, and unfortunately, after he fell on his tushy, he got back up, and that unfortunate goal went in. Now, in the Panthers game, there was a lot of people, like, the a team calling that was a little bit tougher on the Panthers. I thought they sucked in the third I thought in the first two, there just wasn't the most exciting offensive plays in this game in general. You had a couple mixed-in plays here and there by the Drews, the Huberdos, the Kucherovs, and etc. of the world. But in the first two periods, all you have was that nice setup play from Jonathan Huberdo to Anthony Duclair, where Anthony Duclair was able to tap it in in front, where Vasilevsky had no chance. In the second, <clears throat> you had the really nice play by Kucherov, but that was also... One really nice, so you had one really nice play in the first two periods, and then it was kind of more still feeling your, each other out, and also more just defensive along the boards, keep the guys outside play, to then when the team that figured it out was the Tampa Bay Lightning, they just really took flight and took off, really being able to take advantage of rebounds, especially as Belmore scored on the rebound, being able to roof it on Bobrovsky, and then Colton scored opposite on a rebound as Hedman shot from the point. And um, Colton was able to, uh, oh no, Paul actually shot that one. And then Colton was able to put it through his five hole, where in between that, Kucherov was then able to score that power play goal that they challenged for goalie interference, but it ended up being naught. And that's really what did him in in this game. There was a great play for the Perry goal by Kucherov in the second period and a great play by Huberto for the Duclair goal in the first period that was set up by Brandon Montour. Other than that, there wasn't much activist in those first two periods, and it came in the third. Now, we'll go to, before we capitalize on the great OT game of the Rangers and Hurricanes, <clears throat> let's just get this ridiculous fiasco out of the way. 9-6 uh, to six in the playoffs, Elias Lindholm started off with a wrist shot that Mike Smith really should have had. The Maggiapani play was a great play by Bachlin to take it behind the net. And then Richie had a steal to be able to score the first goal for him. Now, Connor McDavid was able to get it back with a nice nifty move in front. I feel like Markstrom, though, felt like he overcommitted too quickly on that and probably would want that one back. Coleman was then able to also uh, pot one of his own on a wrister that was then able to give them the 4-1 to one lead, where at that point that was on Miko Koskinen. Coleman then scored on a tip-in as he came off of the bench and was able to run into that tip-in there. But then Evan Bouchard was able to score on a wrist shot. Well, that was a beautiful spinorama play by McDavid to be able to get it to Bouchard for that play. 
but then Matthew Kachuk, because of the bad play by Cashian, after Bouchard scored, tackling someone behind the net, Matthew Kachuk scores on the power play on the wrister, a power play they shouldn't have been on if Cashian was more able to just control his emotions. But then Zach Hyman brings him back single-handedly. Zach Hyman has two goals, not one, but two, and brings it to the 6-4 total. Zach Hyman had a killer second period being able to be one of the stars of the game, even in a losing effort for Edmonton to be able to bring him back. And then in a bad game overall, uh, Leon Dreisaitl was able to find the wrist shot uh, for the goal to make it 6-5 before it all, all unraveled then for Edmonton in the third after Kyler Yamamoto tied it at 6-6. It looked like it was going the right direction for Edmonton, but then just a couple of moments later, Rasmus Anderson was able to score. Then Kachuk scored about seven minutes after that again. And then Kachuk scored the empty netter, of course, giving him the hat trick where Keith Kachuk, his papa, was sure as hell not throwing his hat onto the ice. But in the that was a ridiculous game. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a play. I never have. That playoff game, Peyton and uh, Pirlo said it right. It was like an all-star game in the playoffs. There was the most offense you've really seen in a while. Bad goaltending, bad defense, all offense. You don't tend to say that much in the postseason. Now, a game that was good goaltending, good defense, and little offense was the other game on the night. The 2-1 to one game between the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers that it looked like the Rangers would have had a good chance to take because their first two periods were as perfect as perfect could be. You kept the uh, Hurricanes to the outside. They only had 14 shots. Everything you wanted to have going was going for you. Heidel had the goal. The only problem was you weren't able to beat Ronta a second time, and you weren't able to get it past <clears throat> a hot goaltender that's been hot the entire playoffs for the Hurricanes in anti-Ronta that second time. So then it left it up uh, for the opportunity for Sebastian Ajo to tie it, and Sebastian Ajo was able to do that. And then Ian Cole was able to have that wrist shot in overtime that there's nothing that Eagers or Sterling could have done about that because unfortunately it ended up hitting for Rangers fans and fortunately for Canes fans off of Ryan Lindgren's blade and into the net. So nothing Igor could have done about that one. So that's the first four games. Two great OTs in the Colorado game and the Carolina game. And then when it comes to the <clears throat> Battle of Florida, great third period by the Lightning to close them out. When it comes to the Battle of Alberta, great battle back by the Oilers, but then kind of just got pounded in the end after that Anderson goal in the third period, and then it ended up being a good offensive closeout by the Flames in the third period. Still too many defensive chances to Edmonton in that third, but that, again, that game was all offense, not something you're accustomed to saying about the playoff. Now, in game two <clears throat> for the Florida and Tampa Bay series, Pirlo, E-Money, and I all did pick Tampa in the series rooting for Florida. I liked what I saw early from the Giroux line. I liked what I saw from Huberdeau and Duclair early in that game. Even the Bennett's, even into the second period. It was just once <clears throat> the Lightning were able to get that first goal, they started really more getting the tie going their direction. The The Panthers had more chances still in the second half of the second, where in the third they were really able to kind of keep them to the outside more in that game. And I think the Panthers' biggest key to this game would be they have to come out. It can't be like last game where it took the teams eight or whatever minutes to even figure each other out. they got to come out with the ante up here and score, and it can't be 14 minutes because I went back and it was 14 minutes in Duclair was able to score. I want them to be able to come out with five with like a five-minute run to start this game. That's very good because that's the way you're going to be able to beat the Lightning because they think they have the momentum now. If the Panthers come out really that strong... I think that's the best chance if they come out kind of in that feeling out process game again. I think the Lightning are just going to smoke them in this one. When <clears throat> you have the Blues versus the Avalanche, that game was was one that in the first early on, the Blues were able to get more chances. The Avalanche then kind of figured out exactly how they had to play the Blues because they don't have other than Kairos of the world and a couple others. The quickest skating team, they have more of a go-through-you physical skating team. So if you're able to just kind of keep them on the boards, keep them to the outside, the Blues ain't going to be as effective. Where, again, the reason they were able to get their one goal um, was because they were able to get a nice steal from Ryan O'Reilly, and then the second one was a nice play by Kyrou, who's been hot in the entire postseason. So I think the Blues, the biggest key for them as they're looking to rebound against the Avalanche <clears throat> would be try to do that to them, but that's easier said than done because they're one of the quicker skating teams, 
with the great line depth in the league. But what showed in that first game was great line depth of both teams. They talked about it on the broadcast. I completely agree with them there. The line depth of the Blues and the Avalanche is immaculate. So I think that's going to continue to play in the series as you have very good defensive matchups in the bottom six against the Blues. You have Erickson, or not Erickson, you have um, guys like Cairo and O'Reilly going up against big timers for the Avalanche like McKinnon and McCarr. So obviously O'Reilly made that play on McCarr. So I think it's just about being able to find your game and also a guy that was better on the defensive end, has had some flaws defensively, has been good offensively in this playoffs, that has had a very good overall season. I would like to see step it up as an overall defenseman again. Is Falk, who I think is going to do that. So this is a game I actually think has a chance to be 1-1 at the end, just because Bennington played so good in game one. He's one of those like adrenaline junkie goaltenders that's almost like a closer in baseball. And I think if he can ride that hot wave and the Blues can come out, with a solid chance, say the chances are 8-7 to seven or even 8-5 to five in the first in favor of Colorado because you expect from the puck possession play to be in favor of them. I think that would be a good first for the Blues because then they're set, saying, again, we're right there with you and this is just going to come down to the bitter wire of who's able to get that second goal, which was then Josh Manson in the first game. So this game I could even see potentially going to OT again. But I do think that game has a chance to be 1-1, but I do lean towards Colorado just because of how quick their team is with that depth compared to the Blues having the depth but not as much quickness and elusiveness. But I think there's a good chance that the Blues, with how hot Jordan Bennington has been in the last four, have a chance to take game two there if they're able to come out, get some good plays by the O'Reillys of the world, the Kairos of the world, the Shens of the world, the Tarasankos, uh, Barbashevs, and others. I think they'll be able to have a pretty good game. So that's the takes on the games thus far. It's been about a 12-minute and like 30-second video on the Stanley Cup playoffs on the games this far, analyzing the great four games, two OTs in Colorado and Carolina. And then we also have the great battle of Florida and the great battle of Alberta. That was the offensive galore game, plus predicted <clears throat> the game for tonight and gave some analysis on the games for tonight between the second battle of Florida in the series and the second game between the Blues and the Avalanche. Hope everybody is having a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the Easy Dudes widget to keep China growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June. This has been the Stanley Cup Playoffs Round 2 Analysis and Preview. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.